This is definitely a platform for anyone that wants to know anything related to HR. So that's employees, employers, and job seekers. So if you want to know about how I started my career in HR, then stick around. That's what this video is all about. So me personally, I started my career technically nine years ago. And nine years ago, I was in grad school, finishing my MBA, and had already picked up my master's in human resources management degree. So I was doing a double um, master's degree at the time. And I had literally just like completely stopped with nursing school, hated it, quit my nursing job um, as a nursing assistant. And I decided I was confused. I didn't know what I should be doing. And so my sister was like, hey, you should go to grad school. I said to her, grad school is for smart people. And she was like, yeah, you're smart. <laughs> so it became a compliment, but it really pushed me and it made me think about it. And she was like, you worried about working in the medical field, but I see you wearing business attire. I see you wanting to dress up every day. And she is so right. I mean, she is just so right. My sister hit it net head on, hit the screen. Thank you so much for telling me that because I'm happy. I started grad school. And when I started, I figured, well, I'll get an MBA. While working on that, I realized I had to take some classes, some extra classes, you know, like, you know, like in any college. And those classes I took was human resources. A girlfriend of mine who was taking human resources classes, she kind of talked me into that. And so when I started, I found my passion. I truly loved it. Sitting in the class, I knew the information. It made sense to me. I enjoyed doing my homework. I enjoyed doing projects. Um, it was difficult going to class right after I already worked a full-time job and knowing I had to go home to my child. But at the end of the day, it was like the push was that it was worth it because it was my passion. And so I said that to say that my cousin was also in grad school and he was in the class with someone who was an HR director and she was telling him about a job that she had. And so he came and told me, so networking is your biggest thing. If it's family, if it's friends, if it's the person at the grocery store, the person at the gas station, like network, because that job led me into another position that came from networking. So my first job, like I started going to like these conferences or what have you. And there I network with other people who were like, Hey, we can bring you onto the team. I can pay you more money. You're going to like this more. So that's what I'm going to, I'm here to tell you. Networking is huge. Get on LinkedIn and those other sites that I already told you about on my previous video about how to survive the job search and get out there and network if it's online or in person, what have you. I offered volunteer work so like when she called me um with the decline you know my immediate response was I'm gonna write up a nice email to do some volunteer work okay I didn't have to do that because the person before me didn't take the job and so I was able to start as an HR assistant there and which worked out great but I and it was a part-time job I completely took a pay cut um, from working in local government and working in nursing and what have you. And I will tell you without a doubt, like whatever she had in mind, if she didn't ask me to do it, my HR director at that time, I would volunteer. So like, don't worry about pay because you're in it for the knowledge. They see your eagerness. They're going to give you more and more and more. And that's what happened. My part-time job turned into a full-time job because I was showing that I was eager. So volunteer, like volunteer with um, other HR departments, volunteer with like local SHRM groups, volunteer as much as you can to get your face out there because you never know who has a job that they can offer you. So the next thing is I was just eager. And I just said that I was eager. I helped in everything um, without a doubt. Like I just pushed myself out there with her, with anyone in the organization. Um, and when I say her, I met my HR director at the time. I just, I was eager. 
if she asked me, hey, do you mind going to this conference and staying for a couple of days? Like, I was like, yes. Knowing good and well, I had to figure out, well, what am I going to do with my daughter? What am I going to do with my dog? Like, can my car make it there? <laughs> what do I need to do with my car to get there? But I was eager and I was like, I'm going to make this happen. So the next thing I did was I was just willing to learn. Like, I was absolutely willing to learn. You know, I learned what I could from going into meetings, from just watching, you know, the department move, from diving in and helping folks in areas like payroll or finance or whatever, because I wanted to see how those things work with HR. So I definitely put myself out there and I was willing to learn. But in addition to that, like I said, I have a double master's degree. And after I was done with that, I wasn't done. I went back and got my SHRM SCP certification, which is a SHRM Senior Certified Professional cert Certification. It is a national certification. It's recognized nationally. You get tons of resources from it. You are challenged in it. So don't think that, oh, okay, I got my SHRM certification, so I'm good. No, you still have to get your recertification credit hours, and that comes from learning more and more. So make sure that if you come to work in HR, it's something that you can't just feel like, okay, I got it, I'm done. Like, you always learn, and the laws are always changing. Just like with coronavirus, you know, they made a whole new branch of FMLA, and you had to learn it. So... Be willing to learn, not just in the beginning and not just to get a job, but throughout the entire career. Finally, I just can't say this enough. Network. Networking is huge. Like networking has not just helped me start my career, but it's helped me throughout my career. I mean, one time I just literally like quit my job, highest pay I've ever made, completely did so much with that organization, um, made some foundational things there, but I couldn't get with the, like the culture. And I just felt like, it's not really where I want to be. Like, it made me feel like I was doing things I wasn't happy with. It didn't match with my morals and my values. And I literally quit that job with no plan in mind. And from networking, going to lunches with a couple of colleagues that I normally go with, I reached out to them and was like, hey, I literally, like, just quit my job and, like, lost my mind. And they automatically, or he automatically put me with some companies that he knew so that I can do consulting for them. And it worked out. Like I was working for myself, making my own hours, learning new industries and feeding my family. So networking is huge. Like definitely network. I can't say that enough. So my career path, I first started as an HR assistant for a local government. And then I got a job offer as an HR specialist where I really worked as an HR generalist um, more than anything because I wasn't specialized in one topic. I worked on everything in HR. And so I worked there for quite um, for a few years. And then I left from there and accepted a position as an HR associate, which is the same thing as an HR generalist, where they do everything for the entire employee life cycle. So when I was done, or I won't even say done doing that, but at that same place, they were ready for me to go up to another level. So they offered me a position of assistant HR manager when we hired in a manager. And so that worked out because I was able to kind of like leverage up, get some supervising under my belt, that type of thing. And But I was with the same organization where I accepted the job as an HR associate slash journalist or what have you. And so I became an assistant HR manager. After that, um, I accepted a job at my current place of employment which was the position of HR journalist. Um, and as an HR journalist there, during the time that we didn't have a director, I served as the interim HR director. That organization did aggressive recruiting, a lot of reorganization that caused a lot of recruiting, things of that nature. So my last capacity there, or my capacity at current time now, is HR journalist slash recruiter. So I'm, I function as both. It's difficult. I don't suggest it to anyone. Pick one or the other. It's hard. <laughs> um, obviously, my career goal is to move up in my career and not stay as a journalist. Um, I get it that some people get there, they get comfortable, they get relaxed, that works for them. Um, but I feel like I would not have went and got like a double master's degree if I wanted to be an HR journalist for the rest of my career. So my plan is to actually use my master's degree and get a return on my investment. So... To the sky eyes for me, put out good vibes. Definitely keep me in your thoughts, keep me in your positive prayers. Um, we don't know when that may happen, but before retirement, I like it to happen. And right now, I'm only nine years in, so I got some time. <laughs> the next topic I wanted to talk about 
was most the most common job titles in HR. And so the most common job titles are your HR admin assistant. So your HR admin assistant is that person that literally functions as an admin assistant, but literally only for the HR department. And I feel like most admin assistants just get the title of literally just admin assistant. But in HR, you normally find the HR title with it because it comes with strict confidentiality. Um, you're going to be exposed to folks' salaries, their addresses, their social security numbers, their date of birth, you know, a lot of information. So I've always seen an admin assistant in the HR department, like, preface as HR admin assistant because it is a different type of, of being an admin assistant. Um, they are assisting the entire department. Anyone that's in that department that needs something, um, they will still function as a regular admin assistant, but they will function for that way in the HR department with different projects or like repetitive emails or different types of research, small projects, what have you. Um, your HR assistant is very similar. That's the next topic or the next job title is your HR assistant. That typically works in the same capacity as your HR admin assistant, to be honest with you. Um, and, and right now, I'm just going from like your lowest level HR position to your highest level. So the next one would be like your HR specialist. Some people can go into the street being an HR generalist. Some folks will have you automatically specialize in the topic. So most HR specialists, maybe they specialize in the HR system, the software system that you use. Maybe they specialize in benefits. Maybe they specialize in medical leaves. Maybe they specialize in just different aspects of HR. And they focus just on that. Like all day long, they're literally just doing all medical leaves, all workers comp, all FMLA leaves, or what have you, all benefits. So they're primarily just focus on that. I mean, sometimes they can be called a benefits administrator, um, but most times that's the person that runs the department, makes the decisions, not the person that does the everyday, day-to-day tasks. And so your HR generalist is somebody that can touch on any and everything that hits HR's door. They are your person that can do the recruiting if they needed to. They're the person that can do the onboarding. They're the person that can do the system, the payroll pref um, preparation. They're your person that can do benefits management. They're your person that can do workers' comp management, FMLA leaves. I mean, they're the person that can retirement preparation, exiting interviews, what have you. They can do everything in the employee life cycle. Um, and your HR manager or your HR supervisor is the next job title, same thing, except they supervise the department. And they kind of manage these projects. They're more of a higher level um, than the other positions. So they may be kind of navigating the way that work is done or the way that projects are done or what have you. The next one is going to be your HR director or your chief or VP of human resources. They're usually at the top of the food chain for HR. So they, depending on how large your organization is, they may have all three or they may have one. Your HR director, chief human resources officer, or your vice president of human resources. Depending, depending on the industry or what have you, there's no set in, in frame. Not every organization has every position, but if you kind of wanted to know, like, where should I start? That's kind of how it goes. Um, your recruiter isn't normally, like, listed separately, but that is definitely a part of the HR department um, as well. And they can function as an HR specialist, so that's the reason I didn't go into recruiter. But your recruiter is a person that's just going out there looking for people to come in and start with the organization constantly. So they're doing job postings, job descriptions, job offers, career fairs, posting jobs, going through applications, setting up interviews, what have you. So um, that's kind of HR. I mean, if I left something out there, definitely let me know. Um, but if you have some interest in how, start, how to start or you have some questions, definitely comment down below. If you've made it this far, I thank you so, so much. I thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And definitely, please tell me by now, you didn't hit the like button. Okay, all right, cool. I'm not going to badger y'all, because as long as you watch this far, you've done enough for me. But I really appreciate it if you are returning or if this is your first time here. If you are not subscribed, definitely subscribe so that you can get nothing but alerts. Click on that alert button right next to it after you subscribe, and you can know every time I release a video. They're going to be amazing. I'm only anticipating greatness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming to my channel. Have a good day.